How's it going Eliminators? Today I'm going to be showing you how a variable drive system works on a white outdoors riding lawnmower. So let's get right into it. So this is a white outdoors riding lawnmower. It has a 42 inch deck and a continuously variable transmission. Essentially how a CVT drive works is you have a very long belt from your engine pulley going back through a little idler system and that goes back to what's known as a variable drive pulley. Now the variable drive pulley looks a little something like this. So essentially on this model of machine that long belt coming from the engine comes down to the bottom section of our stack pulley and there's another belt that goes from this top part and that goes directly to the transmission. This stack pulley here has this center piece and you'll notice that it moves. It goes up and down. So what ends up happening is you have your belt coming down here and you have a throttle pedal right here. Normally what happens is the harder you press your throttle, the faster your machine goes and when you let it go, it returns to this position. So what happens underneath the machine is when you press on that throttle, there's an idler pulley setup that puts tension on that belt. And what that does is it pulls that belt tight against this pulley here, which raises this center part. And what that does is it pushes your top belt out. So what you end up having is a small pulley turning a much larger pulley. So essentially it just relies on this centerpiece moving up and down to change your gear ratio. Now the issue that my customer had was he was driving this machine, he had his foot to the floor as you would say, and what ended up happening was he let go and the throttle pedal stayed in this position. Now when that occurs, the usual suspect is a throttle return spring. So somewhere underneath your machine you're going to have a spring and it'll look something like this. So this hooks up to your arm and then that goes back to the frame so that when you push your throttle it pulls it back. However, there was still slack on the belt underneath. Now my customer actually brought me this machine believing that the transmission was seized and he was almost right ready to sell it. I said let me have a look at it and let me go over it first. He said that it just went out on him when he was going full speed. So what ended up happening was that little pulley on the inside of that stack pulley seized up and that's it. Now to see the stack pulley, I'd recommend that you remove the battery. So I'm going to do that now. And now that the battery is removed, we can have a look at our stack pulley. We can see that our belts are definitely damaged and in desperate need of replacement. So I've purchased some belts because I actually got this machine freed up. So just to reiterate what I was saying, if your throttle pedal doesn't return, the first issue is normally a throttle return spring breaking. It's a simple fix. You just locate your throttle pedal, you go up underneath the machine and you locate your spring and you see if it's broken. If that's not the case, then you move on to your stack pulley. Because if that center piece seizes in the top position, what you'll have is extra slack on your bottom belt. And that bottom belt there is the one that goes back to the engine. So I'm up underneath the machine now, and this is our double idler setup for the belt drive system. This is your lower drive belt, as they call it. That belt, again, leads you back to your stack pulley. And then from your stack pulley, you have a second belt known as the upper drive belt and that goes to your transmission. Again, that is under spring tension as well by that big spring there. But the point that I want to try to make is you may think you have a seized transmission and it may just be a seized pulley on your variable drive stack pulley there. So again, you know, if that seizes in the upward position, this belt will have a lot of slack on it. It's a really long, loose belt. But as soon as you go ahead and press on that throttle, and for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna use a bungee cord to hold my throttle down. But as I was saying, when you press your throttle, it engages the double idler, which then puts tension on your belt. So at that point, the first order of operations is to obviously get the stack pulley unseized. So how do you go about doing that? So because these belts needed to be replaced anyways, what I did was I took some lubricant and I sprayed it where that center pulley is supposed to move up and down on that shaft. 
Sometimes they get a little rust on them, they corrode, and they just seize in place. Now you have to remember that if you're not replacing your belts, then you might end up with a little bit of belt slippage for a little while because you could get a little bit of oily residue on your belts. Obviously, because I'm replacing my belts, I don't have to worry about that. But as soon as I got that pulley oiled up, I fired up my machine, I put it to about half throttle, and even though the throttle pedal had a lot of slack on it, what I did was I put the transmission into forward and I took my foot and I slammed it as far forward as I could a couple times and I heard this real loud squeal and then all of a sudden I was driving. I did a little wheelie and that was it. So again, if you put your engine to full throttle, you'll probably have the wheels come up a little bit higher, but that essentially just is the brute force method of freeing up that pulley. You could end up removing that pulley, but again, you know, that's a lot of work to go in there and remove it. And I'm gonna go in there and lubricate it properly before I install my new belts, making sure to wipe off any excess. But essentially by lubricating that pulley, and slamming the throttle down with a little bit of force, I was able to rotate it, and once it started rotating, that center piece started moving up and down on the shaft, and this machine was driving again. Here's some clips of that. So by putting the transmission into forward and reverse and driving it both forward and reverse, we eliminated the possibility of a blown transmission. And essentially I was able to contact my customer and say, hey, this machine's still good. And I would recommend at this point a belt change and a lubrication of that stack pulley. So as you guys probably seen, I went ahead and ordered two belts. Here is our large belt from the engine to the stack pulley back there. That is a five eighths by 95 and a half inches. The part number for that is a 954 dash 0467. I don't know what the A is for. It didn't say that on the manual, but when I ordered it from Stens, you can see the Stens number there. They put the A on the end of it. And then our pulley here, this one is also a 5 8 belt. And that part number is a 954 dash 0468. And again, there's your Stens number. Essentially, this is a, an easy fix. The transmission was still good. And all I have to do is change the belts. So like I said, once I get the belts off, I can go ahead, lubricate that pulley and then put the new belts on. And this machine should be good to go back to its owner. It smokes a lot from the engine. He says that he also has an oil leak from the overhead valve gasket. So there's a multitude of engine issues that it has. However, it did start and it ran good enough for me to test out the drive system. Well, that's it for today's video. I'm gonna be doing a full video on the drive belt replacements for both the upper and the lower drive belts. So you guys are gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here for one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to come on back next week. Check the channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.